theme, the unlimited power, is not my theme. It is the theme from our speaker for the whole week. I did not ask him, Pastor, what did you want when you gave this theme, the unlimited power? And so I am struggling to imagine what you wanted to speak about. And I'm going to speak on one aspect of this theme, the unlimited power. When he comes from tomorrow, he will be able to take us into depth the things he desired through the power of the Holy Spirit for us to appreciate. He chose the text of Acts of Apostles, chapter 1, verse number 8, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to all ends of the world. I can't wait to walk through that text when the man of God is speaking to us about the unlimited power. But this morning, those online, those here in the sanctuary, those following us through KBC, I want to welcome you to the text of the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse number 23. Numbers, chapter 11, and verse number 23, which then guides the message for this hour. I'll read. And the Lord sent to Moses, Has the Lord's arm been shortened? Now you shall see whether what I say will happen to you or not. And the Lord said to Moses, Has the Lord's arm been shortened? There are some versions who say, Has the Lord's hand been short? Now you shall see whether what I say will happen to you or not. Let's pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in the sanctuary here and for all those who are following us online as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. You said, if you be lifted up, you shall draw all men unto yourself. And so my Father recognized my assignment this morning is to lift your name. So my Father, I pray that may I not be seen, may I not be heard. But may you be seen at the heart as you speak to us all, beginning with me, to everyone connected on this altar this moment, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. It is about four to five days since the children of Israel left Egypt. By now, as we get to the text of chapter 11 of Nabucco Numbers, they have a number of experiences with the Lord. And Moses is leading them. When they left Egypt, they thought it would be very easy. You know, Moses knew the terrain of the land. He knew the distance. In fact, he was leading them in the route he knew very well. But God came and told Moses, no, not by that route. I instructed you, you have to follow through where the cloud leads. And as they follow the cloud, they, Moses was discovering that God is leading them into a place of nowhere. They continued journeying on. Moses, who knew the place very well, he started getting worried. Where is God taking us? Well, of course, you all know that they came to a place where they met a dead end. 
There was huge river for them to cross. On the both sides, the mountains, and behind them, the enemies are coming, begging for their blood. And people started complaining. Why has God brought us into this valley of death? What kind of plan does God have with us? Well, we all know the story and how God came and he saved them from that and he made a way for them. And after they crossed over to the other side, they are journeying on and about that days now, they are encamped somewhere. But after that period of time, they then leave and they are journeying on. Then about the fourth, fifth day of their journey, they are exhausted, their resources are exhausted, they have nothing to eat in the wilderness, and they all turn to God to cry. They tell Moses, Moses, you know what? Even though we are crying to God for help and for salvation from the hands of our masters, this is not what we signed in for. We did never imagine that God would behave this way with us. In Egypt, Moses, we used to eat and drink. There was plenty of food. How came that you and your God has conspired to come and destroy us in the desert? Well, as they were complaining, the book of Exodus chapter 16 will let you know that then God came to Moses and told him, Moses, cheer them not to cry and to complain. I shall give them food. And then God begins feeding them with manna, the food that they knew not how it was cooked, where it came from, or the ingredients of that substance. They began eating food. But it didn't take a long time before they were fed up with this food. And so in chapter 11 of the book of Numbers, the Bible begins by saying, and the children of Israel began to complain. And their complaint displeased the Lord. For the Lord had eat and his anger was aroused. And so God brought some fire to consume some of them and scare them and to remind them they are not alone in the desert. But this incidence of them complaining in chapter 11 was so out of hand that Moses was so much of a world. They went to Moses. They asked Moses. I want you to tell us Moses very well. We thought you were a good man. We thought we could trust you. We thought you are our salvation. But now it's very clear. You have an agenda together with that God you talk about. You conspire to destroy us. What is this you are doing to us? Who can feed on one food every day forever? We are tired of your food. We are tired of the food that God has given us. We want meat. You know, when I was reading this passage, something shocked me. That this complaint, the first complaint, they were complaining they did not have food. God supplied food. Now, their second complaint, they are complaining of variety. <laughs> we, we, you, you, are, you, are giving us, you are giving us something every day. We, we, we are not used to this kind of a, a menu. We, we, we are used to sampling stuff here. Moses, this is not what we signed up for. In fact, as you read the text, you know they say, hmm, where in Egypt where we were, we, we, were, we were eating in verse number five. We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlics. But, but now, our own being is dried up. There is nothing at all except this manner before our eyes. They, they, they are telling Moses, Moses, if you are forgotten, you, you just came the other day. In Egypt, we end a lot of garlic, we end a lot of onions, we end a lot of cucumbers, we end a lot of melons, we end a lot of all these good stuff. 
you, you, you can imagine you're doing us any good by, by giving us one substance called manna, which we have no idea of. Give us the Egyptian menu. You know, when I was reading this, I, I, I got so much shocked that actually this is how we all behave. That God has saved us from the world. He has brought us into the sanctuary to feed us with his all a divine manner, his divine word. Give us the menu for the heavenly sanctuary, uh, the menu for the heavenly, uh, the, for, 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 for the family of God. But we keep demanding, serve us with the Egyptian men. And we are saying in church, and everyone wants to experience a bit of what it used to be in the world. We all come to church, and we are pushing the church to allow us to be of a little like of the world in the church. We, we are asking God, God, don't you see it is so monotonous to behave in the same way from the day we were baptized. We stopped eating meat. We stopped drinking alcohol. We stopped going for the clubs. We stopped doing life. Jesus, don't you see this life is dry? They are telling Moses, our life is better than this, Moses. And so we want you to go and tell your God, we are tired of this life. It's so dry. Uh, young people today, they are feeling the church is dry. Mm. There is no life in church. Many of them are pushed to come to church. The rules in church make life dry. The life of the children of Israel in the wilderness with the diet that God has provided was to them drying up their life. And they asked Moses, we cannot continue. We need something different. And in fact, they were very particular. Moses, you may not give us melons because we know you can grow melons in the desert. But Moses, one thing we can't do without meat. Give us meat. If you gave us meat, we are okay with manna. But without meat, we do not want your manna. How many times have you as a Christian given God conditions? How many times have we come to God and we want God to receive us in our own terms? God invites you and he tells you, come the way you are, but yet once you come here, he tells you, take upon you my yoke and learn from me. We are not to instruct God on what to do with our lives. We come to learn how to live this life with God because he is our life. Can someone say amen? And so Moses is with an experience so unique, he doesn't know how to behave himself. And so Moses is so overwhelmed. Then, and as they are complaining, and Moses also joins in complaining. You know, let me tell you somebody here. You know, a church that is complaining of almost everything can easily make their pastor, their complaining pastor. You're not getting me. You see, when the people of Israel, the children of Israel continually complained before Moses and before the Lord. Even Moses joined in the sin of complaining against God. Moses, who was their strength and their pillar, who always reminded them that God is with them. For once, Moses is doubting the presence and the power of God. And he goes to the Lord and tells God, why have you descended to fix me, God? Why are you afflicting your servant? Why are you set me up for destruction? How can you do these kind of things to me? God watching from heaven said, how would you bear the complaints of these people, but I can't withstand the complaint of my servant. And because of Moses complaining, God came. And so God comes and tells Moses, in verse 18, I have heard your cry, and I have heard the cry of your people. Go and tell them to consecrate themselves, for tomorrow you will eat meat. Because we have cried out in the hearing of the Lord, saying, Who will feed us meat? For we were better off in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat, and you will eat. 
You will eat not for one day, or two days, or five days, or ten days, or twenty days. I am going to feed you with what you require, the meat for good thirty days. But I can assure you, Moses, go and tell them, I am also willing to continue even after thirty days until a sign is clear on me. You lose the meat, and the meat comes through your nostrils. Be careful with your complaining to the Lord. Be very careful. Be very careful. Some of us are too much complaining. Too much complaining about everything. Too much complaining. Be very careful what you're complaining for and to who you complain. God came. He told them, I've heard your complaint. But then I am going to do what you asked. But I shall push it on you until you need it no more. And so, Moses looked at God. And this where the center of my message now. So just be with me, just be with me, just be with me. So Moses is listening to God. And then Moses is so mad with God. God Moses is so annoyed with God. I so angered with God. God is so senseless. And Moses is asking God, God, uh, you, you, you just came to, to tell me to go and gather these people who have been complaining. I have been spending sleepless night, God, when you are enjoying your sleep up there. God, I've not been eating, have not been drinking, I've been so much stressed, God. You just came to tell me. I go before these people and tell them tomorrow, not even after a week, tomorrow, you're going to give them meat, all of them. Do you even have an idea how many people I am with? God, let me remind you, if you forgot the people that you asked me to deliver, they are 600,000 foot soldiers. Now, when you hear foot soldiers, the Bible, and you get me, that these are people who would go to war. We are not counting about the small boys and all the women and all the girls. We are not counting. If we were to count the totality of the people that Moses was leading, it is in millions. But Moses is asking God, are you out of your mind? Mind. Who can do this? Who can feed such a huge number of people just within a few hours with meat in the desert? In fact, at the church there, Moses is asking God, shall we slaughter all the flock? Are you there with me? Uh, shall we slaughter all the flock? Oh, 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 oh God, uh, maybe you're thinking about the fish. Who will go and gather all the fish in the sea and bring it out, bring it out, and then come and make a meal for all these people so that they may stop complaining? God, you are of order. At that moment, God looks at Moses and discovered this issue is deeper in Moses than I imagine. And God spoke to Moses. Ask Moses in verse number 23, Moses, I have heard your complaint. I have heard your concern. But let me ask you, Moses, has the Lord's arm been shortened? Has the Lord's arm been shortened? Has the Lord's hand been weakened? That now it is no longer strong. Now, the, the, the term here as the Lord um, being shortened, it simply means not the physical arm of God. It simply implies the power of God. Moses, are you implying that now something has happened that the God you've known, the God who took you before Pharaoh, the God that you have known, the God who split the Red Sea for you to walk through, the Lord that you knew who was powerful to dislodge the, the wheels of the chariots of your enemies and make all of them be swallowed in the sea, the God that you know, Moses, are you telling me today that his power because of the situation has been weakened, has been shortened, that he is now able to keep his promise. That time, Moses is silent. God looks at him and tells Moses, watch me. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, somebody. God tells Moses, watch me. Watch me, Moses. Watch me and see where the word I'm saying will not come to pass. I know according to you, Moses, this is an impossible venture. But what is impossible with man is possible with God. Can you say amen? What appears difficult in the mind of men is so easy in the ideas of God. Moses, watch me and see whether what I'm asking to do, I will now be able to do. And for sure, the following morning, quails vain from heaven. Can somebody say amen? Meet that they had no idea of came. They were all so happy. They began eating and they ate and they ate and they ate for a whole month until they refused to eat of the meat. Now this is where I draw two lessons. Then we'll call it a day. You see, friends, I see the experience of Moses as one who is feeling like it was a trap. God was setting him up for ridicule, for destruction. Moses felt God was dishonest with him. Moses felt God was unreasonable. And I'm just here this morning to ask you a question. Have you ever felt set up by God? Have you ever felt that God was leading you into a trap? Have you ever felt that God deceived you into Getting into a situation with a promise he will be with you only for him to abandon you. I know you're struggling there alone. This is the experience of Moses. And Moses is asking God, how can, could you do these things to me? Now I'm asking somebody here this morning. Have you devoted yourself to the Lord? Serving him with all your heart, your resources. You are always there for him in church. Always present for every church assignment. Always praying with the sick. Always encouraging those who had broken. Always praying and great miracles happen to people's lives. Every day you are there for the mission of the Lord. But just one day, when we are so zealously working for the Lord, things seem to change and it seems and appears that he is not there with you. He seems far from you. He doesn't anymore pick your calls. He doesn't respond to your text messages. He doesn't any longer check on your tweets. God is out of your reach. God has blocked you. You can't access him yet Oh, this and where you are is because you believed in him and you gave yourself and your life to him. Have you felt like God was setting you up? You see, friends, there are times when just for the sake of keeping our faith, just for the sake of being a faithful servant of God, just for the sake of or being an obedient child of God, not thinking yourself in the world, but looking after godliness just for the sake of your keeping your faith. Afflictions come your way. And you wonder, where is God when I am going through this? He seems absent. Now the people that you are challenging about your faith, are laughing at you, mocking your faith. They seem to be doing even better than you. Imagine a situation where you end to leave your very lucrative job 
just for the sake of your faith. You came, and I know some people who have abandoned their jobs, their responsibilities, just to come and serve the Lord. But yet once you are inside the church, you meet brethren who have no respect for you. They shock you. They disregard you until you are not God. Where on earth was I going? Why did I have to leave my job just to come and serve you with the people who do not recognize the sacrifice I made for my family just to come and follow you? God, where are you? I imagine it's just today somebody who had to lose their job Having worked stomach for so long, you got that job by one week into the job or just a month into the job, the Sabbath issue is raised and you cannot stand the issue of Sabbath. You have to choose between your job, we support your family and your faith, we support God's relationship and you choose to abandon your job just for the sake of faith. Yet as you do this, Trusting the Lord shall open a new door. It seems God is not opening another door. So long after, you still come again. You can't afford bills. You can't pay for your children's school fees. You can't have life just because of your faith. You pray God is silent. I'm just asking somebody this morning. Have you came into a point where you feel it was a trap? Moses was there. And he's asking God, why did you choose to afflict your servant? They are not mocking me. They are not calling me names. They are not asking me, where is your God? They are tormenting me because of my faith. Yes, friends, could be your health is failing. Your marriage is breaking. Your career is dying. Your business is crumbling. And your family is disintegrating. Yet you trust in the Lord. You wake at 3 a.m. in the night to pray to the Lord. Nothing seems to change. Where is God when your life is messed up? This is the question that God is addressing with Moses this morning. And God comes to Moses and tells Moses, Moses, I feel your situation. I understand your situation. I know Moses for sure. This is no easy in the eye of man. But Moses, as the arm of God being shortened, can somebody say amen? As the power of God being limited, allow me friends this day and for the week to introduce to you the unlimited power of God. God is so powerful that even when things seem to be now working for us, even when we seem to die, even when we seem to be walking through the fires, even when we seem everything is crumbling down upon us, God is always there with us. He comes to Moses. He's asking Moses, can you tell me, Moses, have you considered my power? This will be the challenge of the moment. You, think, you, you know, let me, let me speak to somebody here. You see, Moses is telling God what you are suggesting to do. I can't understand it. That this is impossible. But, but, but God is telling Moses, Moses, I did not call you that you may understand me. I called you that you may believe in me. Can you say amen? God has never called us that we understand who he is. God calls us that we may believe in him. And once we believe in him, we shall do all that he asks us to do, whether it makes sense or it doesn't make sense. By the way, the whole issue of faith is illogical and senseless. No wonder the Bible says he chose the foolish things of the world. Is somebody with me? He chose the foolish things of the world as a way of shaming the powerful and bringing salvation to humanity. God has never invited you to understand him. He wants you to believe in him. At this moment, he is preaching to Moses. Moses, I see because of the situation at the moment, your faith is dead. You are now doubting me. I want to revive you, Moses. Has my hand been shortened? Can't you remember, I am a power of God. I can do anything I want to do. And indeed, this morning, doesn't matter the situation you are in. I promise you, on this holy altar, the arm 
of God is not short. He can reach out to where you are. He can pull you from your pit. He can reach out where you are groaning and drowning in feelings and emotions. God understands your situation this morning. Don't you ever imagine you alone in that? I can tell you for sure, God, even though you don't see him, even though you don't feel him, he is in it. He is there in it. But he is in it not to watch you struggle. He is in it because he wants to glorify you through your that experience. He wants to exhort you, to purify you, to fit you for great assignment. Just stay put. The Lord is going to show up. You, you know, friends, he's asking Moses, has my power. When you read from NIV, is it the NIV? Good News Translation, it put that verse this way. Is there a limit to my power? I wish I could hear somebody say amen. God, in the moment when you are spending sleepless night, when you wake in the night, you can't sleep. When you have received a letter on your desk, when your marriage is disintegrating and all indication has ended for destruction, when your spouse has walked to court for divorce, at that moment, and you're still on your knees, but she is pushing for divorce, he is pushing for divorce, that moment is when God is asking you, is there a limit to my power? I found from International Standard Version, the translation there says, is the Lord short on power? I love this. Is God short on power? Just to suggest that God's power is unlimited. You're going to touch to him. Don't limit God. Let me, let me speak to somebody here. You so, my friends, the greatest impediment to God's mission is men and women who have been placed in the positions of leadership and influence by who wear God's agenda against their abilities and resources. This is the greatest impediment. People who receive the agenda of God and weigh it on who they are, what they have, what should be spent to accomplish this, we have leaders in church who have been a stumbling block to mission. Members who do not want to hear any suggestion for mission. Whenever mission agenda is brought, they shoot it down because to them it is all about money. Listen to me. God is teaching you and me today. It is not about money. It is about him. Moses is asking him, how, how is that possible? No, no, no. This, this reminds me of the day when God, Jesus is doing the same thing God is doing here and he has so many people to feed and then he's asking the disciples because he discovered there was a little boy there there was a little boy there there was a little boy there who, a little boy there a little boy there, who, who I saw you were shaking can you listen up now? who had done some, some just a little stuff how many loaves of bread? how many loaves of bread? and how many fishes? And then, wait, wait. Jesus tells the disciples after seeing this, have people sit and feed them. Five loaves of bread, and that's not, not bread, but loaves, very tiny things, and two fishes. And one of the disciples who knew the economics of finances, <laughs> somebody with me here, I told Jesus, I, I, I checked, I discovered you never went to any school. You want to know the things of spirit. They leave us with their stuff. We, we, we are the masters of economics. We, we educate you, Jesus. Listen to me, Jesus. Even when Jesus, even when Jesus, what you're asking is impossible. You know, people, who wear God's agenda against the abilities and the resources. But God would want you today to know it has nothing to do with you. Yes, you could be knowing the economics 
of finances and the budgetary principles, but you also need to learn the economics of salvation. Can somebody say amen? You need to learn the economics of salvation. It has nothing to do with your pocket. It has nothing to do with your time. By the way, God does not need you to advance his mission, but you need God to advance your mission. God is not desperate of you. He just invites you because of the grace that you can experience his love and you can grow like him as you walk with him. He is not after your money. Keep it to yourself. The mission of God shall continue. Because Moses, you're out of order. I know what I'm talking about. And watch this face. <clears throat> I, I read a verse in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, and it touched my heart. Habakkuk says this when he's talking about the unlimited power of God and what he can do in the difficult situations of life. He says, though the fig tree, ah, I see it's there. Though the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fuel shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stores. Yet, hallelujah somebody, yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will, I will joy in the God of my salvation because I know even in the dryness of the situation, God can create his springs. God can revive. God can create waters. God can bring forth better things. I'll have to wait upon the Lord for I know the Lord is in it. But Moses can to learn not to limit God. And so the text of Acts chapter 1, verse number 8, Jesus says that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you to suggest to you today that the power to save is of God. The power to transform is of God. The power the hills is of God. The presence of the Holy Spirit is the unlimited power of God to all who believe. He said, you shall receive power because my kingdom is of power. I don't want you to come and serve me when you're looking so weak. This is a kingdom of power and the power is unlimited this power is so powerful that everyone who comes to me, he is going to receive the power, but there is a condition. Prelude to of this one, allow the Holy Spirit to be in you. This one is the way to power. For once Moses doubted, and the Spirit of God was almost running out of him, he doubted, but when he accepted to see the power of God, indeed God performed the miracles. When the Holy Spirit came, we all know that the disciples who were so weak became so strong. Can you say amen? Who were timid became so brave. They could face anyone. They could go anywhere. They overturned the world down, ups and down because of the power of the Holy Spirit. When God is in it, you are powerful. There is no any other way for God to be in your life but through the formula, the Holy Spirit to come upon you. The church which has the Holy Spirit is a powerful church. Let me speak to you this morning, friends. We are dealing with a powerful God. We are dealing with unlimited power. Timothy says, or Paul tells Timothy, hmm, that spirit, which was given on the day of Pentecost, <laughs> is not the spirit of fear. 
and to meet it the spirit that we were given on the day of Pentecost is the spirit of power of love and sound mind we can overcome every argument we can silence every argument we can go anywhere we want we have the power to trample upon scorpions we speak against the powers of darkness we scare them in the name of jesus we slay the lions we silence the mouth of lions we are there in the power of the holy spirit and i can assure you even today the power of god in church is unlimited those who are possession themselves on the sign of the lord they are enjoying the power and i want to invite you this morning friends as we begin the end here we go prayer i want to declare to you today because of what i know and in the power of god there is nothing that will overcome you if you are in the spirit there is nothing let me tell you friends walk in the spirit walk in power sing in the spirit sing in power pray in the spirit pray in power preach in the spirit preach in the power live your life in the spirit and live a powerful life for they who come to Jesus they receive the power of the holy spirit and that is nothing whatsoever that come against you i want to declare this morning your sickness your sickness is not above the power of god are you sick are you going through a terminal disease believe you me today God can change your situation. Is your marriage in the verge of breaking? You have tried every counselor, but it seems not to find direction. I tell you today, try the Lord. Be in the spirit. Most of us are not able to change our situations because we face our situations in our flesh. We are fighting in marriages in our flesh. Come to the spirit of God and all that that you're struggling with shall come to pass. Let me tell you friends. When God showed up to Moses. Meat was available. When God shows up everything else will show up. When God shows up in your life everything else you've been looking for will show up. When God shows up in your life your dying marriage will show up. When God shows up in your life your career that is dying will show up. When God shows up in your life your health that has been of a challenge will show up when God shows up in your life everything your career will show up your promotion will show up when God shows up in your life everything else will show up for he has a limited power but do you trust him do you trust him as we end this here we are calling you to focus on the unlimited power of God. I don't know how your life has been like, but I am pursuing this morning, even in the verge of your destruction. I am tempted to declare in the spirit of God and on this altar today, there are no weapon 
that has formed against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. Because if God shows up in your life, he is going to slay all your enemy. Every tongue which rises against you, you will be able to silence it when Jesus shows up in your life and declare today on this altar, they shall come, yes, from one direction to torment you, to crush you. But when God shows up in a situation, they shall flee in seven in different directions because when God shows up you are powerful in this life do not fear do not give up do not quit just hold on wait upon the Lord he is coming he's going to fix that for you never think it's too late he is on the way coming hang there in prayer and in faith that's where Isaiah chapter 3 the man of God tells the saints of God. In verse number 10, go and tell the righteous it will be well with them. Can somebody say amen? Go and tell the righteous that it shall be well with them. What is it you're going through? Child of God. What is it that you're going through that makes you feel that God's power in your situation, it's weak. God is asking Moses and asking every one of us today, He's my power. Now limited because you are in this situation. It's my power limit. I know your house was locked. I know you were not able to pay house rent. And the landlord came and, 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 and he pushed you out of that house. But let me tell you, friend. God is aware of that. Maybe for you, staying in that house is the reason you're not blessed. <laughs> and God must push you out from that house that he can set you to see new perspectives of life that you can go out for your blessings. But you hear cry. God is in it. Allow him to accomplish what he began in you. For I am persuaded that he who is on our side is greater than who is against us. Stay in the Lord. Stay in the Lord. Close this year with the Lord. Get to 2024 with the Lord. Tell them. It has not been well with me in 2023, but I know it shall be well with me in 2024. Step in faith. Wait upon the Lord, for there is nothing impossible with him. Can I invite somebody who says Jesus? I want to repent my sins like Moses. And watch you do your thing in my life. When Moses surrendered to the power and the leading of God, he witnessed every morning meat coming right at the doorsteps of the houses of Israel. If you allow God to lead, you will see and witness Bread brought at the doorstep of your house. You may not see it today because you're so mad with God. Because you are focusing on what you do not have. Most of us focus on what we don't have. And we forget to focus on what we have. We have God on our side. Let's focus on him. And all these things of the world shall strangely grow deep. Trust you. I want you to stand because I want to pray with you. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know whether you're in church here, you're online there, you're watching us from home or from the office or anywhere you are, but there is an experience you're going through. You're wondering whether God is with you. I'm here this morning to let you know He is with you. He is in a situation and He is powerful. Just stand for prayer. Somebody who says, Jesus, I want to walk with you. I want to walk with you. 
People who say, I want to close this year in faith and in confidence. The Lord is on my side. I see oh, many things that are happening around me, but, but, but I am trusting the Lord. I for sure, I can't see any way out here. I feel like I'm caged in. Yes, let me tell you, friends, God at times behaves as though he was setting you up. Not because he wanted to destroy you, but because he wanted to set you up for higher ground. At times, God will behave like he is caging you, he is trapping you in. Just because he wanted to cage you there for a moment that he can open a great path for you. Trust in him. Step in faith and wait in faith. I want to pray. I don't know what is experienced this morning. It could be sick. It could be your relative. It could be your marriage. It could be your children. They're into the world, drinking and doing all manner of drugs. You say, what? Where did I go wrong, Pastor? You could be here this morning. And you for sure know you have a court case. You're here this morning. You're so much worried of the outcome. You're here this morning. You've been visiting people to help you that are not connected with the Lord. You've got to break those altars. Come and connect yourself with the unlimited power of God. I want to pray with you. Thank you for those who are standing. I don't know what you've been through. But I am feeling there's something you're struggling with. You've been praying. You have been praying. Even this morning you prayed. Somewhere alone. You walk in the night. You are pleading with God. You are pushing it. It's not happening. You are pushing it. You are almost giving up. Stand for prayer. I don't know what it is in your life. Thank you for those who are standing. I'm about to pray. I don't know what you are challenging God with. It could be an investment you're doing. You wanted to buy a house as a family. But when you're in that deal, some bad guy got involved. They disappeared with your money. I don't know what it could be the issue this morning. But you are feeling you're in a situation where you even doubt whether God checks on you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Just stand in faith. Let's talk to the Lord. Is there one more? Thank you, my sister. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're going through. But I want you, as we close this year, close this year in confidence. Go out in faith. Say, I know my God is powerful. Behave like the three Hebrews who wished God would change the mind of the king, not for them to be thrown into the fire, but the Jew and the Jew of being arrested and dropped and thrown into the fire. But I can assure you, like it was for their case, before they slay you, he will be right there with you. Step in faith. Asking us this morning, is my hand in shock? Is this no? I am the one who spoke and things came to be. I'm the one who silenced the mouth of lion. Daniel had a warm night. I am the one who patterned the sea. I am the one who made that old tired woman past menopause have a, a healthy bouncing baby boy who brought forth the son of God. I am a limited God. I can do anything I choose to do. Trust him. Trust in me. I'm praying. Gracious Father in heaven. Thank you for challenging us today through the experience of Moses that you are a limited God with a limited power. Most of the times we fear 
Because we weigh what we want to do with our strength, our abilities, and resources. That we discover we are so weak, we can't move a thing. We become so frustrated. We go into depression. People are living under depression just because they failed to completely trust in your power. And as we walk through the end of this year, we introduce to your people the unlimited power. God, come and fill us with your spirit. Come and speak power in our situations. Come and break the strongholds of the evil one in our lives. Come and change our situations. Come and give us breakthroughs. Give us testimonies. Because we are before your presence. And in your presence, there is power. Lord, meet all these people today at the very point of needs. Heal them. Restore them. Open new doors for them. Overcome for them. Give them testimonies. Renew their commitment. Renew their strength. Make them sentinels. Make them strong men and women. Make them step in 2024 in confidence because they are walking in faith. They are walking in the spirit. When they walk in the spirit, they are walking in power. This is our prayer this morning, Jesus. We thank you and we praise you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.